I should have been brimming with happiness, finally owning the home of my dreams. But instead, I dread every upcoming weekend. Why? Because my husband's parents visit every single week, and I'm treated like a maid every time. Far from getting a break from the stress of work, I only grow more exhausted with each day off. I reach my limit and decided to invite my own parents over, hoping that it would deter my in-laws from visiting. But my husband lashed out at me, bellowing, Don't you dare invite your parents. If you don't like living here, you can get out. Well, fine, I'll leave. He'll be the one to regret it. My name is Emma. I've been married to Michael for five years. We were previously living in a rental, so we've been planning to buy our own house soon. Michael's parents got wind of this. Oh, Emma, Michael told us about your plans. You're finally buying your own house, huh? Yes, that's right. If you need any help looking for places, just let us know. We're more than happy to help. Ah, thank you. How about visiting some open houses soon? I had plans on carefully selecting our new home with Michael, but my mother-in-law seemed keen on being involved with every step of the property search. Just yesterday, she showed up unannounced with a brochure for a plot of land that's up for sale. Emma, what do you think about this property? It's near the subway station, and it's spacious enough for a duplex house. A duplex house. Apparently, they're planning on moving in with us. That's why they've been sticking their noses in our property search. She's been constantly chiming in with suggestions like, it would be better to live nearby the subway since it's a hassle to walk, or it would be convenient to have a supermarket nearby. And here, I thought she was just looking out for us. But all along, she was just stating her own preferences thinking that she'd be living there too. I immediately relayed this to Michael. Michael, your mother came over this afternoon with a brochure for a plot of land that's for sale. It seems like she and your father want to live with us. Oh, yeah, she did mention something like that. What? You heard it from your mom? Why didn't you tell me such an important thing? I thought we could talk about it once it was more concrete. Do you object, Emma? Well, yes, because I was thinking that we'd be living you and me. And besides, your mom and dad are still healthy, aren't they? I can't predict far into the future, but I think right now it would be best if we live separately to maintain a good relationship. I see. I understand how you feel, Emma. Michael listened to my feelings and was able to convince his parents that we're not planning to live together right now. After hearing Michael's reasoning, it seems his parents finally gave in. I thanked him again for handling the situation so well. Thank you, Michael. No problem, Emma. If you're against living with them, then we won't force it. Instead, let's have my folks visit our new home often after we move in. Of course, after that, Michael and I found the perfect place, and we were finally able to get our own home. Once we moved in, his parents came to visit our new home right away. Emma, congratulations on the move. What a nice house you have. It seemed that his mother was satisfied with our new home. Please feel free to visit anytime, I told her with a gentle feeling. That day, the four of us shared a meal around the dinner table. The following weekend, I suggested to Michael that we go buy some decorations for the living room, but he seemed disappointed. Uh, can we postpone the shopping for another time? Do you have plans for the weekend? My folks wanted to come over. What? They just visited last week. Well, they seem to really like this house. You did say feel free to visit any time, right, Emma? Well, yes, I did say that, but could you make dinner and entertain them a bit? After that, his parents started to visit our house every single week. 
and every time they visited, they became increasingly demanding. Emma, it's been so hot lately that I'm feeling a bit drained. Something light like noodles would be fine for lunch, but for dinner, I'd like something hearty like steak. Emma, do you know the new pastry shop near the station? It's all the talk around town. So I think it'd be perfect for dessert. Could you buy some? They would come over early in the morning, boss me around, not help with any household chores, and then leave. From the second visit onwards, they would even assume that it was okay to stay over. There's a typhoon, and we enjoy a good breakfast. So, could you have it ready for us first thing in the morning? The demands of my in-laws kept escalating. Between taking care of them, I barely had a chance to rest on weekends due to work fatigue, leaving me even more exhausted. I reached my breaking point and sincerely pleaded to my husband. Michael, I really want your mom and dad to stop staying over at our place every weekend. We can't help it. They said they want to come. Well, you could just refuse them. Between working on weekdays and caring for your parents from morning till night on weekends, I have no time to rest. Think about it. If we were living with them, it'd be every day, not just the weekends. Your in-laws originally wanted to live with us, but because you were strongly against it, we prioritized your opinion and they gave up on moving in. You should tolerate them coming over on weekends. Compared to living together, it might still be better. However, it was becoming unbearable to have this situation continue indefinitely. While I was troubled about what to do, I received a call from my mother. Oh, Emma, are you doing well? Sorry, Mom. I haven't been calling you. I'm managing somehow. Really? You sound down. Are you okay? Well, actually... I told my mother that I had been troubled by my mother-in-law's frequent visits since moving. Upon hearing this, my mother sounded concerned. That must be tough. I imagine you would be busily settling in after moving and buying necessary items, so I've been refraining from contacting you. Because my in-laws visit every weekend, I still hadn't invited my own mother to our new house. If I invite my mother... Maybe my in-laws would refrain from coming over that weekend. That evening, I suggested this to Michael when he came home from work. Hey, Michael, I want to invite my parents over this weekend. Is that okay? However, his response was unexpected. No way. My parents already plan to come over this weekend. But your parents have come over so many times already. My parents haven't been over even once. That's because your parents haven't said they wanted to come. My mother has been considerate, waiting for us to settle down. She really wants to come. Oh, really? Well, then invite your parents over when mine aren't coming. They've waited this long. They can wait a bit longer. Don't you think it's strange to always prioritize your parents who are always over here? Can't your parents refrain next week? You're my wife now. It's only natural that we prioritize my parents. Anyway, tell your parents that this weekend is not good. I don't want to do that. You should just not invite your parents. If I can't call my parents because of that, then your parents don't have to come to my house anymore either. Since they've given you to me, they are prepared to not be able to see their daughter, right? Wait a minute. That's absurd. Why can't I invite my parents regardless of having a married daughter? Isn't it natural for them to want to see their family? Despite Michael's stubborn refusal, I made this proposition to him. Okay, let's give up on this weekend. But from now on, let's try to invite each other's parents on a more regular basis, okay? Uh, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. If you're going to suggest something that troublesome, we might as well not invite your parents at all. Let's end this conversation. We haven't resolved anything yet. In my mind, 
I've already decided I'm not going to let your parents come over. If you don't like it, you can leave. No matter what I said, Michael only thought about his parents. He never considered me nor my parents. His refusal to have a conversation and his insistence on his own opinions finally wore out my patience. Fine. If you feel that strongly, Michael, I'll leave and it'll be too late for regrets. Regrets? Why on earth would I regret if you're gone? Just remember this. I won't recognize any apologies. Don't come crawling back wanting to return. Leaving a loudly laughing Michael behind, I headed home. When I told my parents what had happened, they agreed with me that Michael's opinion was unreasonable. My father was particularly angry. A person who can't respect his family is fundamentally wrong. I'm disappointed in Michael. You should stay here and not return to that house. Those were his words to me. I knew I wasn't wrong. Feeling relieved, I made up my mind to pursue a divorce. A few months after leaving the house, I received a call from Michael. Hey, how much longer do you plan not to return? Have you forgotten what day it is this Saturday? He appealed to me in a panicked tone. Oh, right. It was the day we were supposed to invite your co-workers over to our new house. Yes, exactly. We've been planning it since we moved, remember? But won't your mother-in-law be coming that day? Why don't you tell your co-workers that my parents are visiting and refuse them? There's no way I can say that. Moreover, I've invited a new boss from my department that day. If I cancel now, it could affect my future at work. I don't care. You're the one who kicked me out, remember? Is this the time to be arguing? Stop sulking and come back already. We need to start preparing for everyone's arrival or we won't make it in time. I'm not returning to that house. What? Are you okay with jeopardizing my job? I don't mind. I plan on leaving you. Leaving? Are you serious? Yes. I've been thinking about it since I left the house. My parents also agree with me. Your parents, too? They're just as out of touch as you. Do what you want. I'll have my parents help with the preparation for inviting my co-workers. I don't need you anymore. You're going to regret this. That's my line. Goodbye. I hung up the phone abruptly. Right about now, Michael is probably frantically contacting his in-laws, preparing to invite colleagues from the office. Since his in-laws have done as they please so far, it would be good for them to taste some hardship for once. During the problematic weekend, our home phone rang in the afternoon. When I picked it up, Michael, with a flustered voice, said, Oh, why is Emma answering the phone? I was calling my new boss's home. Why? Well, because it's my house, of course. Emma's house? Don't tell me the new boss is Emma's father. Yes, my father used to work at Michael's company. He had been away from the main office for a few years as an advisor because a related company was launching a new business. But it was decided that he would return to the main office next month and become Michael's boss. I knew, of course, but I couldn't leak the internal announcement until the information embargo was lifted. And I kept silent even for Michael, my husband. I thought he would notice when he saw the boss's name in the internal announcement, but it seems he didn't check properly. Michael started to plead with me desperately. My mother has prepared expensive ingredients and good alcohol, but no one is coming. When I contacted my colleagues, they said there was a big fuss at the company because I refused to invite the new boss to my house. If the boss doesn't come, no one else will. Emma, please convince your father to come to our house. Please persuade him to clear up everyone's misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? It's not a misunderstanding. It's a fact, right? Michael, you said, don't ever invite my parents to our house, didn't you? I, I didn't know your father was my boss then. 
The situation is different now. Quite a convenient excuse. I've asked you many times if you wouldn't regret it, haven't I? Well, that's... It's too late to regret now. You're responsible for cleaning up your own mess. I hung up the phone without waiting for Michael's response. I told my father about the phone call from him, but of course, my father had no intention of going to that house. There's no need to go to the house of a man who disregards his important daughter and her family. My father was even more incensed. My father is scary when he gets angry. He was excited to buy expensive ingredients and alcohol for today, but I guess that spending ended up being for nothing. The next day, Michael came to our house with a pale face. Emma, I'm sorry for everything I've done until now. Let's start over again. Please come back home. My father, instead of me, who was looking at him with a dumbfounded face, responded, Start over? Do you even understand what you've done? Michael, turning pale, prostrated himself before my father. Sir, I apologize for my actions. I am here today to apologize. You've ignored my daughter for months now, yet you've never once bothered to visit her. I didn't think you'd turn out to be so untrustworthy. No, that's not it. I've been busy at work. If you're not so busy, you have to work on the weekends, or so I've heard. Weekends. Well, Michael stammered. Likely, his mother was visiting him every weekend. Michael, who never did housework, would have given up if it weren't for her help. I'm sure his mother was also looking after him during the weekdays, taking advantage of my absence. My father, guessing this, sternly said, Never mind. You seem to get along quite well with your parents. It seems like you jumped into marriage before you were ready to be independent. That's not true. I respect Emma's feelings and even rejected the idea of living with my parents. You're still saying that? It's natural for a couple to decide whether to live with their parents, yet you kept harping on Emma for rejecting the idea and never listened to her. How is that prioritizing Emma's feelings? Well, that's... And marriage means both families become relatives. Yet you invited your parents to your home every weekend and told us absolutely don't come over. How dare you disregard Emma's family, us? I didn't know you were going to be my boss. If I'd known that, I would have invited you first before my parents. That's exactly what I mean when I say you're self-centered. You don't get it at all. People like you shouldn't be in a leadership position. My department doesn't need someone as selfish as you. But sir, silence. Get out of my house now. Don't ever show your face here again. Afterward, my father advised his superiors to remove Michael from his department and reassign him to a regional branch. No one defended Michael, who was already known for his selfish behavior. Even his parents, who had doted on him, couldn't follow him to a remote region. Now they can only see him once a year, if at all. Meanwhile, I've been living comfortably at my parents' house after finalizing my divorce with Michael and focusing on my work. I work hard on weekdays and spend weekends with the people I love. When I think back to my past lifestyle when I was not able to live such a normal life, the free life I have now is comfortable and irresistible. From now on, I want to cherish my parents and live at my own pace.